Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about how to utilize the concept of loops in MIPS. So for this example, we're going to do two, we're going to go through two programs here, one on a for loop and one on nested for loops. So to get started, we're going to go, we're going to look at this for loop program. As you can see, this uses both branching and jumping instructions. So if you need a review on that, feel free to refer to my other videos on that, as you'll see them in the playlist. But to go through this, um, essentially the point of this program is it's going to print out one, two, three, four, five, just like this. We're going to clear that just so we can run it again. But we're going to start the counter at one, and then we're going to print we're going to print that number out. So this is we're using T zero here as the number. And then we print a new line to separate it. And then we increment the counter, right? And then we jump back to the for loop. So that's a big advantage of these unconditional jumps. You can just, without any comparison or any computation, you can just jump right back to the for loop. And then it's gonna keep repeating that for two, three, four, five. And then when, once that's done, immediately there's a comparison at at the beginning seeing have we reached have we have we gone over have we gone over five because at that point we don't want to print out any more numbers so this is where the branching is needed so that's why both unconditional jumps and branching is is important so we're comparing our t0 register to five and if it's greater than that we're gonna jump we're gonna skip this and go all the way to the n4 loop which just exits the program. So let's get started. Let's assemble it and let's run it. As you can see here, it prints out one, two, three, four, five. And then once that's, once that's done, it will exit the program. So if we want to change it, we can change it to, let's change it to uh, 10. Assemble, run. As you can see here, just goes to 10. So moving on to the concept of nested for loops. At, at this point, this is where you know, we're starting to get more lines of code. So it's important to be tracking your registers. So the point of this program is it's going to print out a, a five by five square of stars. So to start off here, we have our outer loop counter, which we're going to designate as register T0. And then we have our inner loop counter, which we're going to designate as T1 register. So comparing to C in Java, you can compare T0 to your I, and you can compare your T1 to your J, as is the most convention in Java and C. So we're starting off with our outer loop. Again, it's a similar concept to the for loop. We're checking at the very end to see if we reached our five rows. Because again, we're, this is two dimensional now, rows and columns. So once we have five rows, then we end the program. We all go all the way down to here. But obviously we just started. So um, at this point we initialize our inner loop counter and then we get started for the inner loop. Again, very, very similar to, very similar to this but it's just nested inside. So once we get the five, we can end the inner loop, branch down to here, and then we just print a new line, increment our rows, right? This increments our columns as we're going through our inner loop, and the this is incrementing our number of rows. So, and then we jump to all the way back to outer loop, right? And then it'll keep doing that once we have five columns and five rows. So let's, let's assemble and run this. As you can see here, five, five columns, five rows. So again, this demonstrates how useful uh, branching is and unconditional jumps. You're gonna need to know that you're gonna need to know how to use both of these instructions 
well so you can get a fairly concise program like this. So uh, thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, feel free to comment and have a good day.